Welcome to Influential Entrepreneurs, bringing you interviews with elite business leaders and experts, sharing tips and strategies for elevating your business to the next level. Here's your host, Mike Saunders. Hello and welcome to this episode of Influential Entrepreneurs. This is Mike Saunders, the Authority Positioning Coach. Today we have with us Alexander Gio, who's the Managing Director of Wealth Excel. Alexander, welcome to the program. Thank you very much, Mike. Pleasure to uh, meet you and uh, be on your show. Yeah, I'm excited to talk with you. I always love learning about different people's perspectives and industry and and how you serve your clients. So let's get started with your story and background and how did you get involved in the uh, financial services industry? Yeah, surely. Thanks very much, Mike. Again, I appreciate the opportunity to uh, be on your show. Well, I've been in business. Uh, Wow, this year marks my 21st anniversary. Um, I wow. can't believe that the time flies by so fast. I just remember that I joined uh, one firm and then quick enough uh, became independent. And voila, 20 years passed. Uh, I'm still doing uh, what I'm doing and I'm so passionate about it. And in the past 21 years, uh, all I can say is that I've served so many amazing people, my clients and or collaboration advisors and CPAs that I worked with. And over the course of uh, this 21 years, uh, we uh, started to uh, focus on uh, two areas or in other words, expertise of ours that we helped our clients with, mainly uh, focusing on the tax savings and charitable giving. And as a result, uh, our focus uh, became uh, to specialize in two areas. One would be advanced pension plans, uh, where we provide comprehensive third-party administration services and asset management. And second strategy that we uh, specialize in would be finance charitable giving. And we handle everything from uh, underwriting to execution of the loan and life insurance collateral uh, for our clients. So as I mentioned, uh, we work mainly directly with the clients and or collaboratively with CPAs, insurance agents, financial and investment advisors. And in that capacity, we are acting almost as an extension of their services to uh, help their clients with those verticals, such as uh, tax saving strategies and charitable giving. And... I would say our role is to uh, enhance clients' perspective and build pre-tax wealth and also uh, cater to these advisors to enhance their offerings uh, by leveraging our expertise uh, to help their clients to achieve greater tax savings. So that's kind of uh, uh, who we are and what we do. Mike, you know, I I heard tax and tax saving several times, and that's such a huge um, uh, focus because you can have amassed a, a huge amount of money for retirement, but if you have not done it in a tax favored way, then you're getting ready to face uh, a lot of uh, you know obstacles that way. So I love that you focus on that. And another phrase that jumped out at me is I think we've all heard of the the phrase charitable giving, but talk a little bit about what financed charitable giving is. Oh, yes. I am fascinated about the fact that not a lot of people aware of uh, charitable gift financing strategy. However, a lot of people already, believe it or not, doing some form of uh, finance charitable giving. And it's the concept is fairly straightforward. And I think the easiest way to explain it without going into the weeds of the technicalities is uh, looking at the world of finance in general. So anything from your home, I would say investment properties, cars, equipment, services, vacation, uh, any, anything can be financed. And I always ask a question then, why not charitable gifts? Hmm. And in fact, a lot of people who donate various causes already uh, use very common form of financing called credit card. And the classical example I give all the time if you watch a commercial of a Red Cross and you compel to give 
and you conveniently pull out your credit card and say, okay, here's a credit card number, please take however much, let's say $10,000. Believe it or not, you just use the form of a finance charitable giving because it's not you who's sending a cash or even writing a check. But in this modern society and world that we live in, conveniently using a credit card, temporarily borrowing from a credit card company is okay. And IRS recognizes the fact that even though you borrow the money, you're entitled to a deduction at the time of you borrowing and giving to a charity because charity recognizes that gift and issues a receipt in your name, not in the name of a credit card. But then how you deal with a credit card later, whether you repay next month or you go on an installment payments or you never repay it back, that is, well, of course, in the latter situation, you will have consequences. However, IRS does not challenge of the fact how you repay the credit card, when you repay the credit card for the purposes of a deduction. You were entitled to a deduction at the time of you borrowing and giving, not to wait until the debt is repaid. So, and this is exactly the revenue ruling 7838, which been this strategy has been around since 1978 in one form or another. It's just never been uh, sort of programmed in a way of uh, dealing with these specialty lenders who only lend for the purposes of giving. But we all use one way or another already finance charitable giving. So that's kind of uh, how I would describe it. And of course, what we do, we do a full comprehensive approach of uh, entire systemization of. Uh, how this finance charitable giving on a larger scale for folks who make a million dollars plus of AGI can capitalize on 60% write-off to Mm -hmm. uh, finance up to 90% of that gift. And that gift amount qualifies for a charitable deduction, as we all know, up to 60% of AGI, which reduces the client's taxable income substantially. So that is the power of leveraging, Mike. Yeah, it really is, and and I'm I'm curious what the strategy is as far as that debt that you're borrowing, because obviously this is not the right plan for every single person you work with. So it's special people, and we we get that. Um, but then, are your clients tending to leave that debt on there for a while, or are they paying that debt off in a shorter period of time? Oh, very good uh, question. The loan comes very with very lucrative terms. So number one, it's no personal guarantee. It's a non-recourse loan. There is a collateral in place called the life insurance. And the repayment of the loan is uniquely structured so that life insurance contract is used to repay the loan sometime in the future because the loan comes as a balloon note, which effectively will be triggered repayment at the time of a death. So we Mm -hmm. use the life insurance to allow and enable client to uh, permanently have safety net just in case whenever God forbid happens to them and they pass away, the life insurance death benefit kicks in and immediately repays the loan. So that okay. is the period of uh, repayment so that yes. the client, yeah, doesn't have to pay ongoingly. They're not required to pay interest uh, every year. So the interest uh, is simply added to the principal of the loan. And at some time in the future, life insurance death benefit will be used to repay the loan. I love it. Um, I'm familiar with permanent life insurance strategies, and we don't need to get into the weeds of it, but I love how you tied that together because a lot of times people think, oh, I've got insurance, I'm good to go. But if you can use it in this really advanced way that you're talking about, it gives multiple benefits. So I think that's huge. So when when you're talking with your clients, what are some of the common challenges that they face and how are is your firm um, providing solutions for that? Oh, yet another good question. So a lot of times we hear, oh, it's too good to be true. Uh, How come I've never heard of this? 
uh, why would any lender allow us to borrow and what's in it for them? Who are the lenders? Uh, why, if the strategy had been since 1978, my CPA, for instance, uh, never brought it up, or in fact, my other financial advisors. And I always say, look, there are so many strategies that you may not be aware of. It doesn't mean that this strategy is either A, too good to be true, B, are in some shape or form grayish. Absolutely not. We're dealing with the law, and the law is very particular and specific. It's Revenue Ruling 7838. It's not the interpretation of the law. It's not uh, strategy in the way. It's not how you do it, what you do. It's the law. And if so long as we specifically abide by the law and follow the steps that the law allows us to do, you as a potential client entitled to a tax deduction, there is nothing wrong with it. Almost the same way you use the credit card. Nobody asks you a question about why did you use the credit card for the purposes of giving? Same way here. Why would anybody ask uh, why these lender or that lender would lend you for the purposes of giving? It's a no, it's no question asked. But I would say it boils down to maybe top five uh, type of situations when the clients ask. And my answers are like top five would be, uh, well, the qualifying parameters, if you will, of a client's, uh, it's $1 million plus of AGI. And yep. it's a limited pool to begin with. Not a lot of people make the kind of a money that we're talking about to uh, make sense of uh, for this particular strategy. Uh, number two, I would say, even though we deal with this type of clients who make a million dollars, but they're not necessarily maybe charitably inclined because, uh, well, that's how the world is. Some people are compelled to give. Some people are just absolutely not. There's nothing wrong with it. But that particular aspect would automatically rule out them out of the strategy because one of the conditions for this strategy to work, they must be charitably inclined. This is essentially the cornerstone yeah. of a strategy. That's what it begins with. Uh, number three, I would say time constraints, because these individuals often lead very busy lives, as we all know, and they may not simply have time to explore or maybe like research different giving and tax saving strategies. They rely on the resources that they already have built around them or maybe go to uh, those advisors that they trust enough. Uh, but those advisors are not equipped maybe with more advanced type of strategies. So there are many, many reasons, and they simply don't want to invest their time in the, uh, dealing with these type of sophisticated strategies. Uh, number four, I would say maybe like habit and comfort, because we're all creatures of habit, and we are accustomed to uh, their maybe, uh, well, them, I would say, uh, current financial practices and are certainly reluctant to change. So some yeah. of them are very much open, but many of them are like, you know what, I'm okay. And I, I simply don't want to uh, make waves and create possible paths for IRS to audit my books, which is misconception to begin with. But uh, mm -hmm. that is usually in common what the clients would say. And at the end of the day, I think it boils down to the education. And that's what I'm doing. And with a group such as the uh, ERT, I think it's a perfect example where me being as a specialist in these two areas, one of which would be this uh, finance charitable giving, uh, we just need to do a better job of educating potential prospects, clients, and about the benefits and possibilities of uh, structured giving strategy. So that's how I would probably describe it. Mike. Yeah, a hundred percent. I love it. And I think that um, 
when people say it sounds too good to be true, show me the the proof and you can pull up hundreds of years of use of this financial instrument because I know that people have used a uh, permanent life insurance uh, contract for many, many financial tools for so long. So when you can point to the tax code, point to the use from decades and decades, it really helps people feel better. Can you think of um, an example of when you've been working with the client and uh, and your firm really made a big impact in their financial well-being using one of your strategies? Oh, yeah, we face this every day. But just to uh, further your explanation about the validity of a transaction, this strategy comes with actually before we do anything for the client, they would consult with a tax attorney. And the tax attorney, when it comes to sophistication of the strategy, would provide them a written tax opinion letter. And that tax opinion letter not only covers all of the laws and any pending cases, if there are any any cases in the court uh, that resulted in any type of outcome. And by the way, this strategy had zero negative uh, outcomes in any court uh, settings, which is uh, good to know. Therefore, the tax opinion letter comes with so-called highest confidence opinion letter, which essentially, uh, loosely speaking, but in a legal terms, I'm, I'm not obviously a lawyer, but the lawyers say it's a will opinion, meaning the IRS uh, will accept the strategy as a valid transaction because of the fact that all boxes are checked. So A, the conformable note agreement between the client and the lender B, the actual funding of the charity. C, charity confirms the receipt of the funds in issuing uh, the charitable gift receipt. And finally, obviously, client uh, adopting that uh, charitable gift receipt and filing their tax return. So every single purpose for the reasons to prove that this transaction is a kosher and 100% bulletproof in the way that everything is confirmable. So the client receives that peace of mind to confirm the validity of a transaction. They also have ability to confirm from a legal standpoint of uh, why and how and so on and so forth on the transaction side. And only then we uh, kind of go into the nitty gritty of underwriting and so on and so forth. Now, to address your question when it comes to uh, helping clients, we deal with very interesting group of clients. Uh, No kidding about that, because I would say the ideal client profile is someone who is A, charitably inclined, uh, B, adjusted gross income of $1 million or more, liquid net worth of $2 million or more, and total net worth $5 million plus. So to begin with, it's a limited pool, but by definition, it's a very interesting uh, group, yet very humble group. And we, when can go over the strategies and the steps that it take and the timeline associated with those steps, I kid you not, most of the time, a lot of people say, I wish I met you five years ago, last year, three years ago. I could have saved so much money in taxes, number one, and I could have made such a bigger impact in the community. I could have amplified my gift uh, 10 times more than I have actually gifted. So all of these very positive comments, uh, by the time they understand the strategy, they fully vet the strategy and feel very confident and comfortable with the strategy, That's all they say, as if uh, they kind of regretted the fact that they didn't have invested enough time to look into what ifs and uh, what out there that may give them this kind of uh, amplification and gratitude towards of uh, increasing their gift. And of course, it comes with the tax deduction anyways to save on taxes massively. So. I can't give exact specific case because all of these cases have one thing in common. And I just described uh, 
uh, just a few components of that one thing in common is uh, gratitude and their willingness yes. to, from that point on to say, wow, uh, I did something really profound and uh, I really love it. And they tend to continue and renew this program uh, year after year, year after year. And that's why our renewal rate of clients coming back to us and doing it uh, year after year is an averaging about 75%. Mike. Wow. That says a lot when when you can say 75% renewal rate and those people are saying, I wish I had come to you sooner. That shows that they're very pleased with the process and comfortable and confident. So I think that is spectacular, uh, Alexander. If someone is interested in learning more about what you guys do and reaching out and connecting with you, what's the best way that they can do that? Yeah, thank you very much. So uh, we are always uh, open to uh, new clients in a way to help them to understand about the strategy, see it themselves, and uh, uh, really uh, comprehend the power of uh, this strategy. And best way to contact us uh, would be A, by going to our website. Uh, our website name is wealth-excel.com or by calling us at 213-302-8000, 213-302-8000, and request information about finance, charitable giving, and we will be gladly to uh, uh, show them uh, what the strategy is. Or in fact, they can uh, go to our specific uh, lending page called cgf101.com c charlie g george f frank 101.com and it would give them uh, the full spectrum of information about charitable gift financing and then further they can contact us uh, and have a conversation excellent well thank you so much for coming on today it's been a real pleasure talking with you alexander thank you mike and it was a pleasure to meet you as well and be on the show You've been listening to Influential Entrepreneurs with Mike Saunders. To learn more about the resources mentioned on today's show or listen to past episodes, visit www.influentialentrepreneursradio.com.